Okay, you are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, April 2nd, 2023, at around 3 p.m., a Sunday. And we are continuing our playthrough of The Case of the Blinded Birder, a game by MurdersByMail.com. Um, I got an email from them last week saying... You normally pester us on Friday for the PDF version in case the regular snail mail doesn't arrive on time, but we're having a little bit of trouble, and we know it's not going to arrive on time, so here's the PDF. So I have the latest reply. It's here. Um, let's see what to catch up on. The screen looks a little bit different to me. Like uh, The colors are a little bit washed out or something not better or worse just a little bit different over this last week i've been doing a lot more obs coding on a couple of things and i've changed the top down source and i'm hoping that it will all go smoothly but i can't guarantee it so this is a little bit of a practice session too so let's see we have our top down close up now top down wide view is a 4k camera which won't look any different unless i need to zoom in on something so you know i have my cubes that let me zoom in and when it's close to me it's using the close-up camera 4k camera so it can get good detail but then if i go to an area that's outside of the range of the close-up camera it switches to the wider top-down camera. And now that's a 4K source. So this should look a little bit better than it used to when I try to go to an area that's off center. So hopefully that'll be a little bit of an improvement for us going forward. I had to do a, some crazy OBS stuff that I've been trying to figure out for months. Okay, let's see what the chat is talking about. Just bring up discussion from the very end of the last stream. Nicola noticed the missing dog's name didn't match between the ad and what the owner said, plus the dog's color was also different. I didn't even pick that up. That's a very interesting observation. You think it's just a mistake or you guys are suspecting something uh, nefarious is going on with the dog? Interesting. Well, the uh, owner, the owner was someone named Sybil. There's a famous movie about a Sybil with a multiple personality. So perhaps this woman who reported her dog is a little bit unstable, but the dog looked healthy enough. So I think we're okay. All right. What else do we need to catch up on before we start? Um, I did another live stream Q&A last week. You can watch that if you're curious. Um, and I think this week I'll be playing a bunch of Deadbolt Mystery Society games unplanned. So I'll try to give like an hour notice and then I'll just start playing. Um, I've got dozens of those Deadbolt Mystery Society puzzle games. So don't feel like you're missing anything if you missed one. The chat is still talking about the different dog, and, um, uh, sorry, it looks like Ginny thinks it was intentional. Uh, let's just quickly look at that before we catch up here. Let's see. So, we sent Cecily last turn to the <clears throat> old carpet store, and we found out that our guy, Albright, had been blackmailing one of his old customers, it looks like. We got her name. We decided not to visit her yet, but we could if we get bored to see what she'll tell us. I mean, he's dead. It's not going to do us much good to catch him doing some blackmail. Okay, so here was the dog. Let's see. The elderly... So she's elderly. She's... I think she's just losing her mind a little bit. The elderly Miss Ezel, and in the paper, it's Sybil Ezel. I think she's just senile. 
Nutmeg made his way home and posted in the paper his name was Corky. I think she's just senile. Dog seems happy. It's out exploring up in the wilds around the dig. Oh, she tells us about the other, this is another way to find out about the gunshot. But look, now it's, yeah, it's not Meg. Okay, I think she's just senile. I don't think this is anything deeper than that. Senile or something, or a mistake. Okay, and then if you remember the vicar um, talked about information, he visited Imogen's house. And this was actually important because the guy saw a car. Let's see, I didn't bring my pen. The guy saw a car. The, the Imogen's butler saw a car and a woman. So we think that's just further confirmation. Why does a sheet? So it's really confirmation that this is our Kathleen Carwood. But he mentioned a new poacher that we haven't talked to yet, Marcus Lennox, which is very tempting. And it is almost seems like a little bit of negligence that we haven't talked to the poacher because we knew that he's not going to be our suspect, but he could be a witness to have seen something if he was in the area. So we probably want to talk to them before we're done. Okay, so that was last week. Now, let me switch to this and get... Like, let me just try... sort of curious to try a couple other things. Let me... I'm just going to switch to this technical difficulties for one minute while I go get a pen, but just to test this out. So just testing the technical difficulty screen, it seemed to work okay. There was a little picture of Sarah in the upper right, and you shouldn't have heard any speaking from me while it was on. That's my intention. Okay, so shall we get started here? Where did we go? Let's take a look. Where we went. Okay. So Cecily went to visit our main suspect, Kathleen Carwood, who we feel very confident is the mastermind behind all of this and the actual shooter. The only thing we're not sure about is how they ended up all the way on the northwest of the map when they got killed and the circumstances of the shooting. But we're fairly sure she's our shooter and why and everything like that. We sent her because she's good at reading people and we just thought that would be a good person to confront Carwood, the vicar, will get himself killed if he goes. Imogen, we sent to county records. Now, why did we do that? We didn't have a great reason. We just thought, well, it's one of our informants. We should go there at some point. And we thought maybe we will find Albright's wife's maiden name so we can visit her family and get more information on Albright, although we don't really think we need more, but... And then we sent the vicar to the taxidermy shop from the directory because we're chasing down our little side case of the mummified canaries in a box. All right, let's see what we got now. First up is Cecily visiting our main suspect, our primary suspect. By the way, before we start, Speaking of primary suspects, I am re-watching a show from several years ago called The Fall, a British show, a sort of proceed cop police procedural with Gillian Anderson, of all people. And I think it's one of the best such shows that I've ever seen. The writing, the acting, the choices made by the writer it's written directed written directed and something else by one guy alan cubit i think his name is um it's dark but boy is it good it's sort of not doesn't fall into any of the tropes of these 
uh, shows normally. And the acting and the writing is so... It feels like it's on the money. It's, it feels like this was someone's labor of love, and it's really well done. I highly recommend it if you've got the stomach for that material. Um, boy, is it good, though. All right, one of my favorites of this genre. All right, here we go. Let's see what Cecily has found. Okay, already I see we've got uh, something new that we've never seen before down here. That's pretty exciting. Let's see what how that came about. Dearest Jesse, one of the wonderful things about living in a small, closely knit village is that you can leave your door unlocked. People trust one another and know that if they leave their home empty, the chances of being burgled are slim. Nobody locks anything, except for Kathleen Carwood. When I arrived at her cottage near Clover Rise, I knocked, but no one answered. Given the stakes of our investigation, I thought there was no harm in trying the door, and as I say, it was locked. I must admit, I found this suspicious. So I made my way around to the back, to the back, period. Her garden sat unkempt and smelled vaguely uh, of rot. A rubbish bin overflowed into the weeds. A row of flower beds lay years untended. The signs, no signs of pets or rumors present themselves. The near porch waited like a moat of concrete around a back door of antique wood and iron. It was locked and solidly built. Lucky for me, the door frame was off square. I could see the loft through the angled gap. I could see the bolt through the angled gap. By leveraging the tip of my cane under the tip of the door, I was able to lift it just enough for the bolt to slip out of the strike plate. I hadn't expected it to work. The door swung slowly towards me and I gasped. Trying hard to slow my breathing, I went inside. Her rooms were bare, the rooms of someone who spent little time at home. The kitchen was empty, save for some canned goods and a brown paper package of pasta. In the top shelf of her bedroom closet, I spied a large shoebox. Carefully, I took it down and opened the lid. Inside was a muddy pair of boots and a hand towel around something heavy. Careful to touch as little as possible, I un unwrapped the towel and found a pistol. I don't, know, I don't know much about guns, but I'd describe it as a small and non-military looking sort of gun you see crime movie women keeping in their purses. A chill went up my spine. I closed everything up and put it back exactly as I found it. Then a moment of inspiration struck me. I returned to the back garden, relatched the door, then spent a nervous hour picking through the rubbish bin. In the end, I was rewarded with this handwritten note. Goodness me. There's the note. I'll meet you at the same spot. Bring the second item and this will all be over for you. Come alone, I'll be waiting to be sure. R. Okay. So R is obviously Rupert Albright. We found the note setting up the initial meeting where he got himself killed. And here he is saying that they're going to meet at the same rendezvous spot that they've been Picking. That's how we got everything. That's how he got killed. They had picked this secluded rendezvous spot. That explains why they were there. This just confirms that that's their arrangement. And he's saying, come alone and I'm going to be waiting and watching to be sure. So that's how he ended up with his binoculars looking for her. He was hiding across the way, w looking to make sure she was alone. And when he spot her eye on her, she shot him.
I think we've now basically wrapped up our main mystery. This seems very... It's interesting that we got this reply from Cecily that where Cecily used her cane and her skills to get inside this locked house and she had no qualms about it. I'm not sure the vicar would have done this and gone inside someone's home. It's good we sent Cecily. It's interesting that she didn't decide to wait till they got up close that she took the shot from far away but um this seems to wrap it up mm -hmm. now this answers our last lingering question which is why did he why did this happen over at heller's hole and what was the actual nature of him getting ambushed and shot and now it seems pretty clear that they agreed to meet at the bench he was a little while way off studying to make sure she was alone and she took advantage of that opportunity to shoot him. All right, it sounds like we're all in agreement. He just thought he could push her the way he pushed that woman in the carpet store and he messed with the wrong lady. Um, she did not want to be beholden to anyone okay so it sounds like we're in agreement that our main case is over thanks to cecily very i have to say if you're trying to wrap everything up and put a nice bow on it it's nice that cecily who started this whole case with us who sent us our initial letter let's not forget the initial letter which brought us this case where cecily laid out the whole case where the murder happened, how he was shot through the binoculars, so she doesn't buy the story of the poacher while he's looking at birds. She says he must have been looking at his killer. So, I mean, Ces it's Cecily who got us into this case with her cane, who has now gotten the final piece of evidence we needed. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what Imogen got at the county records. Let's see if she picked up anything interesting that we care about. I walked Wooster down to the Middleshire County Records Building, and we spent the better part of an afternoon going through cabinets and drawers. I've always had a passion for research, but even with my considerable experience, it proved challenging to pull up very much about Mr. Rupert Albright. By the end, Wooster was bored to tears and fell asleep in my lap. Albright lived in Netherwell with his mother, Ophelia Albright. He'd moved there about a year ago. Before that, he'd lived in a flat at the Church of Hill boarding house. That's an interesting thing. We could maybe go find out about his history, although we already have figured out he wasn't a great guy. Couldn't find anything about employment. He hadn't paid county tax since 1942. He was an only child. His father died when he was a boy. 1942 was an eventful year in other ways. That was the year he married Alice Crawford. Guess what? We just found her maiden name. That's what we were kind of hoping to find here. At St. Edwin's Church. Their marriage didn't last long. I found a death certificate for her from December 10, 1942. Place of death was recorded as the Middleshire County Hospital. I don't remember if we knew that already. I have a feeling we did. Frustratingly, the cause of her death was left blank. There wasn't a coroner's signature, so my assumption is that her death wasn't a suspicious one, at least at the time. Her personal doctor was noted on the certificate as Dr. H. Lamshu, but he hadn't signed it either. I did some digging on the Crawfords. They own a large farm just outside Netherwell. Alice's father died not long before she did. Alice's brother, Theodore, apparently inherited the farm. I do hope that helps. If you want us to follow up on anything specific, do let us know. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, this is exactly what we wanted. We were hoping maybe we would get some information about his wife. 
This game feels like there's lots of little side details, and this is almost suggesting maybe was something did something fishy go around with her death? Do we want to solve that murder? Do we want to solve that mystery as well? Bring justice to her family? And now we've got the, her doctor's name. So I suppose if you're curious about someone's suspicious death, Probably the family is not the most reliable. You'd want to talk to them, but probably the doctor is the one who will tell you whether it was suspicious or not. The family could tell you a, some gossip about Rupert Albright not being a nice guy, but we already know that. All right, let's go to our directory. Let's mark, let's look up some of these places. Okay, so Alice, Cro so Crawford's are the maiden name of the wife. Let's see if we've got any Crawford's in the directory. I actually don't see any Crawford. Maybe that's because they live out of town. There's Crawford. Oh, that's going to be it. Crawford Theodore, N22. I thought it was Crawford, but it's Crawford. Okay, so Theodore is N22. If we want to go talk to the brother, let's check out this doctor here, Wham Shu. Doctor Wham Sham? Wham Shu. Don't have any without Dr. Lamshu. So we have doctors in their own category, maybe an out of town doctor. Hmm, we don't even have a section for doctors. Sounds like we can't talk to the doctor, which is a little strange. What about the boarding house? Churchill Boarding House. Churchill Boarding House is B85, so we could visit where he lived before this. Why can't we not find the doctor? Sure sounds like we should. Glam shoe. Did I look it up all? What's his first name? Because I see a lamb sham. H. No, it's not going to be him. Hmm. Okay, he's listed under Dr. Dr. That's a little odd, but okay. So there he is, B69. It's good we stuck with it and didn't give up. Okay, so we've got three places we could three new places we could go from this visit if we want to learn more about where Rupert Albright lived the doctor who was the doctor of the wife who died and the brother of the wife none of these seem critical to our case but a little background if we want to solve a little side case of the mystery okay i see my light is blinking Let's see what the chat wants to say. Seems like the contexts are quite well balanced. Give you a few leads to pick from. Not all of them are directly taking you to the main answers. There's also the hospital. I see. I didn't. Yes. What did I not look up with about hospital? Middleshire County Hospital. Middleshire Hospital is B2. Okay, so we actually have four places here. None of them are super compelling, but I don't know. Do you want to find bring justice to his wife? We could talk to the brother, get some motivation. Maybe he feels like Rupert Albright killed her and got away with it. It's curious. Okay, so we've got four new places from that one. That was pretty good. All right, let's see what the vicar has to say for some comedy relief, if there is any. Vickers report. Okay, he titled this report, An Unusual Man. He went to the taxidermy shop. 
Yoli's taxidermy has been a fixture on the western edge of Bakerley since long before I arrived, owned and operated all those years by the same ineffable character everyone just calls him Yoli. I'd never been clear on whether it's his first name or his last, where he hails from, or if he has any family about. My theory is that he doesn't remember himself. Christ, vicar! He murmured as I entered his shop, its walls completely covered in animal heads, hooves, and hide. You scared me, bursting in as you did. My apologies, I replied. How are you, Yoli? He pulled himself up from his workbench, shook his tiny head as if to clear it of dust, and patted his midsection repeatedly. Ah, same as yesterday. No novel growths. Heart ticks along, last I counted. Still had ten fingers. He looked at his crooked digits and counted quickly, just to be sure. You needin' something stuffed, young sir? Nobody calls me young sir but you. And nobody's as old as me. Now what is it then? Have a wee dog that passed, catch a shiny fish, shoot an elephant on safari? No, I only came to ask some questions. Ah, no charge for that today, he scowled, as I'm feeling generous. I began explaining to him all about our investigation. He always seemed to lose interest immediately and limped back to his workbench, but I continued on until I'd finished. I don't know a lick about no man shot in his eye, you know, said Yoli. You'll have to chase your murderers elsewhere, but if you're interested in the other mysteries about the village, I might have something for you there. Oh, do go on, I said. Well, those birds in a box in the newspaper the day our young lad Einstein died. I seen ones like that before, boxes and boxes of them in the home library of a local fly fisherman. You know how fly fishing works, young sir. Well, one makes a hook to look like a tiny fly, then whisks it over the water to tempt the fish. Aye, those flies are often made of feathers from rare and colorful birds, and there's a man in Bockerley I met once, name of Pape, who collected dead birds for exactly that purpose. As I recall, he kept them wrapped in newspapers. Okay, so he says right away, I don't know anything about your main case, but I might be able to help you with some interesting little side mysteries going on around town. And he tells us that there's a guy named Pape, a fly fisherman, who had birds like those found in a box by the railroad. If you'll remember, we're tracking down this case here. Box of songbirds found near the tracks. A box, five feet from the grade stone. Two mummified songbirds wrapped in paper. Jolly Run Company shipping box, which we could visit Jolly Run, wrapped in a 1952 issue of paper. Keeping in mind, it's 1955 now, so three years ago. Feathers intact. That, our guy here, Yoli, just told us that's critical for the way you make these fly fishing. Tea towel embroidery of a pig. All right. Well, it seems like that was a... a efficient lead to visit because we've got someone's actual name to chase down tape who was it that thought of going to the taxidermy shop that was pretty clever someone in the audience decided on that tape k is b5 in the home library of a local fly fisherman Okay. Well, it seems like we should let the vicar carry on with this side case. Debbie says, have we solved the side case? We could visit Pape, but it seems like there's no crime. No, I think we need to keep tracking it down. We need to find out how a box of his from three years ago ended up in a in a ditch somewhere, but maybe he'll say that 
he was moving houses and lost this box. Then we would have wrapped it up. M.E. says, should we go all on side quests again? Doctor on the wife's death, certificate, fly fisherman, maybe the RAF base to see if there's anything about the signals. Um, the only, there's two pieces of our main case that give me a tiny amount of pause that we haven't chased them down. One is the poacher because he might be a witness. And on a related note is the still the tiniest possibility that that third woman in this little cabal was somehow involved. Like what you wouldn't want to do is let's say we, you wouldn't want to bring this case to court and then discover that a witness at the scene saw a second woman. That would get us in trouble. That would get us fired. So it feels like Nic Nicholas says the inspector said the poacher had a strong alibi. So probably he's not going to be a witness. That's a good point. What if the two poachers were together though, and they alibi each other and they did see something. And Tina says, is it time to read the questions? I mean, we are absolutely ready to solve it and read the questions, but I don't think we need to read the questions while we're still chasing down stuff that we know we're going to chase down. We have a witness for Kathleen dealing with the guard alone. We do not know who hit the vicar. Huh. We don't know who hit the vicar. We know that it was Kathleen that went to the same house to collect the guy that the vicar went to. So it would make sense that she was the one that hit him, but we don't know. It's true. And we don't know. We don't know if the other, how deep the other one is involved in it either, do we? Let me just make a note here. I suppose, I mean, that as criminal investigators, our Biggest real question should be this one. This would be on our whiteboard at the police station. Are there any accomplices? Because we know she hangs around with Janet. Did we ever go visit Janet? I mean, I know we know her address. I can't remember if we... Janet Rosso was F20. Did we ever visit Janet? Seems like maybe not. I mean, I am a little bit concerned that we have an accomplice that we haven't nailed down. Especially if she was the one who attacked the vicar. We don't want her roaming free. So if that's our primary thing, we've got F20, <coughs> Janet Rosso to talk to. And then we also have a, the mystery third woman, which we've never been able to find her name. We don't think she's the shooter. She may not even be involved with this group anymore. Have we gone to the university? I can't remember if we've actually gone to the university. Um, there is just a private college. I wonder if there's no, if their university we can't go to. Um, so we went to the Re city of record. We haven't also been to the library stacks in format, the historical society in format, and the reporter. Um, 
Kathleen was alone for both murders, according to eyewitnesses. Well, the butler just saw the one woman in a car. I think that's pretty convincing that she was alone for that, but not 100% sure, but pretty convincing. Um, but then the attack on the vicar, we don't know. And it does seem like we want to go to the air base just to say. So here's my suggestion. I suggest we let the vicar... The vicar's going to be assigned to the bird case. So let's let him visit the fisherman, and maybe he can wrap it up right from that visit. Maybe the fisherman will tell him he was moving houses and one of his boxes fell off the truck, and then wrap that up. So I suggest we send the vicar to continue chasing that lead down. He's sort of on the low, the, um, what would you call that? The low importance, the low... There's a term I'm trying to think of for low weight, low, low consequence thing. All right, so let's send the vicar to continue following up on the bird. So we'll send him to B5. Who's Pape? Pape the fly fisherman. All right. So that's the vicar. Now, I think maybe it makes sense to send Cecily after visiting Carwood's house to visit Janet's house. What do you guys think about that? Sounds like Debbie was thinking the same thing. Let's send Cecily to visit Janet's house. She's good at breaking into houses. Okay, yes, let's do that then. Okay, so Janet Rosso is our F20, right? Winnie, Cecily's going there. See if we can't break into her house and see she's got the, the billy club that the vicar was hit with, maybe. All right, and now Imogen. So Imogen went with Wooster to track down the lost dog, and that was wrapped up. We could send Imogen to... the RAF if we want to follow that lead or we could send Imogen to one of the poachers or we could send Imogen to check up on the medical examination of the wife and see if we could catch Albright mur uh, murdering his wife what do you think about that all right so should we Should we go to the wife or the the wife's doctor or the wife's brother? And then Jan says, meta question, is the system trying to give us more direct clues as time passes by and they want us to finish? I don't think so, no. I think these are the clues you would get if you go to these locations in the beginning or in the end. We're just eventually making our way to clues that are so far down the line that the game figures if you've gone if you've all if you've gone all the way down to here then they can give you some good information it's we're definitely past the point where we could comfortably solve this but it's interesting because in the previous two cases we had a very hard time finding side side mysteries like maybe there was one in one of them and the, I'm not sure the the noir case had any side cases whereas this one seems filled with little side mysteries that are meant to let you tool around town and solve them all right so let's send Imogen to the wife but is it going to be the doctor or the brother it depends whether you want some motivation for figuring out her thing or whether you want hard facts so do you want Imogen to go to the brothers on the farm or the doctor? It feels like we've been waiting to see the brother on the farm, the farm family, but the doctor seems like he might have, be a better source of information. Like he'll say he, she was poisoned or, you know, she fell off a, a horse. I mean, he might be able to solve for us whether it was a possible murder or not. Dr. Jan says facts first. 
Rob agrees, doctor, doctor. Okay, well, and Roberto says brother. All right, well, Roberto, you're overruled by the group, so we're going to go to the father first. Um, we'll go to the doctor first, and then we might circle back to the brother. Okay, so the doctor is... Dr. H. Wham Shu is at B69. Maybe you can tell us something about how she died, and then from that we'll follow up with the brother, maybe, and figure out. I mean, we'll be the brother, the doctor will be able to help us know whether this is something that has the potential for a murder that we should chase down. All right, we've got our locations. Let's go to the computer. So far, the new everything has been working. Okay, Cecily is going to F20 to talk to Janet. Hopefully she won't get eaten up. Imogen is going to Albright's wife's doctor to find out why he didn't sign the medical examination. Did Albright send him away? Does he think it could be suspicious? And the vicar is just following up on his own little side cases of the mummified birds. Here we go. Let's not forget about the carpet lady, says Nicola. If we want to see who was being, uh, if he was actually um, blackmailing. And Tina says, since the brother inherited the farm, it doesn't seem to be an inheritance motive. It's a good point, and he's poor now, so I don't think he got any money from the wife's estate. It's a good point. Okay, let's submit this here. There we go. So we played the previous two cases. We solved them. We didn't spend too many extra turns walking around town, but it feels like for this one, we're going to draw this out. It's the last case they make. It's our last chance to play in this world. I am curious. You can't, once you solve it, you can read the questions without ending it. But once you submit your solution, you can't keep playing. So we're playing this before that, but we should, Everyone has to go into this eyes wide open that our suspect could escape based on us ch chasing down birds and dogs. I hope everyone is okay with that. I am. All right. Well, um, I'll see you next Sunday, obviously, while we, when we continue this. But I may see some of you for a Deadbolt Mystery Society puzzle game. That'll be longer. But you're not going to have much advance notice for that, maybe an hour or so. However, your best chance for advance notice, if you do want to join me for that, is to go to the Board Game Geek Guild section for this channel. That's where I would post informally, hey, I think I'm playing a game tonight. And if you have a specific box from the Deadbolt Mystery Society that you want to play, you could post that there. Of course, subscribe to the channel. That's another way to get notifications. All right. I'll see you next time.